So I was doing me some due diligence, checking into this story about the video games being passed off as real wartime footage. You know, this Arma 3. And here's the results that I got from whatever that was that I entered into the search engine. This was from September of 2021, where it the same game was used to claim there was a bombing of Afghanistan by Pakistan, or that they were supporting the Taliban, according to this other YouTube video. So this is straight from the source, Yahoo, the most credible source because it's so mainstream to normies, and they'll walk away saying, oh no, they debunked it, it was false. We'll get to that part in a minute. In September 2021, Indian fact-checking organization Boom debunked footage that claimed to show Pakistani Air Force attack. Four months earlier, the agency France Presse debunked a video that claimed to show the conflict between Israel and Hamas. In both cases, the clips originated from Arma 3. Four months earlier. So in September 2021, that video game was used to fuel a conflict. Between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Four months earlier, which means it's 10 months ago, it was used to fuel one between Israel and Hamas, and today it's being used. So I, I looked into it a little further. So I decided to go straight to the most credible news source I could find Yahoo. Regarding this most recent use of that same video game, for the same purpose as it has been used twice in 2021. So what they do is play a little game uh, of word salad here. Fact check. Viral clip shows Arma 3 video game, not war between Russia and Ukraine. A blah, 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 blah. A video posted February 20th on Facebook shows a flaming plane falling into a body of water. Then the clip cuts to a rocket attack. Russia versus Ukraine war reads the caption of the post, which racked up more than 37 views within a day. Over the course of 12 minutes, the video shows a variety of military maneuvers involving planes, tanks, and artillery. Similar clips have been viewed thousands of times on Facebook, but the videos don't show the conflict in Ukraine. As independent fact-checking organizations have reported, they depict a video game called Arma 3. As of February 21st, Russia, Russia had not invaded Ukraine. See, that was posted February 20th. What, what, are we talking at midnight because it was, it was posted at 11.59 and technically they didn't invade until 1 a.m. the next morning? Anyway... So they play a little word salad. And I'll just take you straight to cut to the chase. Our rating, false. Based on our research, we rate false the claim that the video shows a war between Russia and Ukraine. In fact, the video shows footage from Arma 3, a military-style video game. Russia had not invaded Ukraine as of February 21. So the normie who's look, who hears this and says, dude, there's a video game company filing a fucking lawsuit for copyright infringements against news agencies that are taking this footage from online from Facebook and they're reporting it. All the, so all the news is coming from social media, making its way to official sources like CNN and MSNBC and all that. So the normies buy it. And they will look at this and they'll come away and say, oh, it was debunked. No, that's false. No, what they're claiming is false. Look right up here at the top. It's a word salad game. They're not claiming that's false. They're claiming that's false. But I read it. Fact check. Viral clip shows Arma 3 video game, not, not war between Russia and Ukraine. And that was deemed false. No. Here's the claim in small print below the main headline. That's your clue. They put that in small print and put this above the headline as the headline. So the person who read this comes away thinking, oh no, that was debunked. Yeah, Yahoo debunked it. Yeah, that viral clip that shows Arma 3 video game, not a war between Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, they debunked that. That was determined to be false. No, what was determined to be false, right there in our rating that it was false, they acknowledge that it's true, that it's not war between Russia, that it is in fact a video game. But, but Yahoo debunked it as false. Which is it? 
And right there in the same article is where they tell you about the other two times that it was used last year for the same purposes between four different, I guess, if you, uh, countries. So now make it six countries. Pakistan and Afghanistan, Palestine and Israel, Ukraine and Russia. Six countries in the last 12 months, 10 months, in the last 10 months, have all received the same propaganda using this video game footage to fuel a conflict that once it actually becomes real, it doesn't matter that it wasn't real to begin with. But it seems almost like the comedy insertion agency is trying to show you how your strings are being pulled and how you're being manipulated by using the same game three times in the last 10 months and with between these six different entities. It doesn't seem like they would be that dumb. It's too stupid to be stupid. They're trying to get the attention of those who will see it. It's like there's part of you that you don't even know exists, and it's that part of you that people will pull your strings by. They call it EQ, like IQ, intelligence quotient, but EQ, the emotional intelligence quotient. And people invest no time and effort and energy into learning about that, and that's why they're at a loss. They don't even know that other half of them even exists. They're not in touch with it. And it's from that other half of them that they're motivated through that fear, through their emotions. And so, it's like we're in a controlled environment. Like when a child gets raised in a household, dad makes consequences for your actions. Because if he doesn't, when you go out there in the real world, there's going to be consequences for your actions and you're not going to be prepared. So I'm going to make consequences for your actions here at home, penalties, when I could just let you get away with everything, but I don't for your own good, right? But there are artificial penalties introduced by dad. So that when you go out there in the real world, you'll be ready for it. So that's what's happening to us. We're being shown in a controlled, measured way how our strings are pulled by people who are doing it in such a way that they're trying to get our attention. So how do we, how do we train these kids to not get their strings pulled out there in the real world? Well, we're going to have to pull their strings a bunch of times until they figure out how their strings are getting pulled and get a hold of themselves or someone else will get a hold of them in that area where they're so easily manipulated and they won't do it with a beneficial motivation. So we need to pull those strings enough times until they figure out where those strings are and how they're getting pulled and how they're actually being played by, like marionettes in order that they can get a hold of themselves and they'll be prepared to go out there in the real world where others who are not so benevolent will get a hold of those strings and truly enslave them. And so right now, when I said there's forces at the perimeter of Jim Jones Island, we've been in a cult, we're behind the Iron Curtain, and forces are about to breach the perimeter? If they just breached the perimeter, you'd defend Jim Jones. But over the last two years, going on three, we've been conditioned in such a way that we're not so likely to go along with groupthink or herd mentality and become the authors of our own authority rather than trust in the authorities who have uniforms and clipboards and badges and titles. Meritocracy funneled through bureaucracy creates credentialism. Those credentials are issued to people, and once they are, they're no longer questioned. So before I go off too much further on that rant, I want to talk now about how phase one of this filtration process appears to have come to an end and the people that fell for it are now being shown. Like earlier today, I had a real tone in my voice when I said it looks like they've got two to five years to think about what they've done. And rightfully so. I still hold a lot of contempt and animosity toward a lot of people because they insisted that we do the same. But I'm going to talk a little bit here about what James calls compassionating them. Because they're finally admitting it to the libtards. That's the only people who watch this stuff. I'm pretty sure none of you saw this, unless you saw someone making a mockery of it. But today, on uh, Mark Dice, there's a pro-mandate protest where mothers, all Karens, are getting together singing about how 
it ain't over because we had a dream and I thought we were going all the way. And you guys are just going to take off and suddenly we're not hearing about COVID. No, what? I thought we had a, a thing. And they just got dumped like a dude that just, uh, you know, used them for a one night stand. And now they're sitting there going, oh, oh, didn't it mean anything to you? They're sitting there trying to process like everything that we've been seeing and trying to process over the last two years. As bizarre as it's been, they're having to process that whole thing in a compressed amount of time. Now that they're coming to the realization or being shown because the very people that led them through that whole thing are now showing them you got rolled. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, this is John Mulaney, recently out of uh, rehab and a new father because New York Post is always talking about him. Assumes that he's being consumed by a grizzly bear here. But these um, are three couples in a restaurant and they are talking about COVID. And another one of the couples, one of the women is saying, um, she read an article in Bloomberg or something that masks may not have benefited or stopped COVID at all. As it started off, this guy, Keenan, whatever his name is, is wearing a mask here. And he said, oh, I forget I'm even wearing it. He takes it off. They say, you can take it off the table. Then this woman says, and her husband doesn't want her to talk about the article because they're not supposed to talk about such things. These are three liberal, Democratic-leaning couples. And then um, then she starts talking about, this is the, you know, the, the central point of why I'm making this video. She starts talking about how people who are anti-vax might have had a point and the reaction from everybody else. Like admitting that, you know, they might have been duped is, you know, I mean, it's a Saturday Night Live sketch. It still sucks, but it is, you know, more truthful about the, you know, these liberal people. So personally relieved that I'm vaccinated. Careful. <laughs> so like this is, you know, like you, you're not supposed to talk about this, right? Like it's, you know, it's sucky in Saturday Night Live, but it's actually there's like a sprinkling of truth here, right? I sometimes wonder if um, if other people who are hesitant, careful. So um, they're about to talk about the vaccine hesitant. Might not have like a valid. What? <laughs> Wait, are you trying to say there might be another side to this? That it isn't just completely one sided? It's not a slam dunk after all. Are, are you saying that on Saturday Night Live? Not valid, but but understandable. Not tonight. See, this is in a weird way, in a Saturday Night Live sucky way, some truth about how the liberal mindset of these people cannot deal with the way the thing played out. And that they, you know, are looking pretty wrong. <laughs> Maybe sometimes we are a little overzealous when we condemn oh no <laughs> see like you know this is um the truth of their you know what's happened here right they are overzealous about condemning people because they have been told what to do by the powers that be that they agree with and now you know the story is going in a different way and thankfully for them all they have the ukrainian situation to take away from what would be, you know, exposing some um, <laughs> failure and, you know, their behavior would be questioned that they would have jumped on board. I mean, they're condemning the Ukraine invasion at the same time of the bullying and hostility. They all, uh, the liberal community and, you know, so many people in the, you know, famous people and news people and politicians condemning the so-called vaccine hesitant, right? But did I have to dump my oldest friend just because he didn't get a booster? <laughs> you know, not funny. Like, Saturday Night Live still sucks. But, I mean, this is the reality of how sucky they were, right? That they were dumping people because of this. And as it turns out, like, the way the thing played out, you know... <laughs> If they're really being honest and they use some critical thinking skills, it didn't go in a way that favored their decision and the people that forced it on all of us, right? The people who 
push this agenda and the ones who went willing along with the collaborators, the ones that willingly went along with it, things didn't work out the way that they had hoped or the way that they thought they would, right? And they completely fall apart here. This guy's taking his blood pressure. She's putting a bag over her head, you know, because she can't handle the possibility of that reality. And he's pulling out his own tooth. And so, um, you know, it's just too much for them all to handle this. He's going down to hell in an elevator. And so, um, not funny here. She's got to do something here. She's got the um, infinity gauntlet. She just snapped her fingers. And she just disappeared from, you know, they can't hit. And the ones that can't handle it are the ones that are uh, I'm about to show you that are m mandating the mandate come back. But that right there, the disappearance turned to dust, might be a little bit of symbolism speak. And I mean... The liberals can't handle the fact that they were completely wrong or the possibility they were completely wrong. And the people they trusted were duping them. And the people they demonized and bullied weren't wrong and were actually, you know, they were victims of their their wrongful thinking, right? They can't, you know, that's the truth of the matter here. You know, not that I'm a Republican or like I care about any of this stuff anymore, right? <laughs> they went out on a limb and the limb you know, broke, and now they can't, you know, deal with the reality of it. And so this is them dealing with the reality of the failure. They talk about Biden not doing enough testing, but the UK, you know, had plenty of testing, had more, you know, all the things, right? The CDC, I mean, they haven't always been perfect, but the science changed. How does science change? When I make a mistake at work, I don't get to say the science changed. <laughs> so this is the reality of, you know, the liberals melting down and not being able to digest <laughs> their failed decision making. And, you know, I mean, it's accurate. And they did gymnastics in masks. She's talking about a kid's birthday party here. Don't. And then they went into another room and took off their masks to eat pizza. This of course they did. Pizza. This is the end of me. So did they really need the mask or no? Did any of us ever need the mask? When you start a mighty network. They're all falling apart here. No! So this is the world falling apart that they got duped. And you know, they're trying to make light of this, but, you know, you got rolled, right? Like, <laughs> you were wrong. I mean, at least they're kind of admitting it in a crappy Saturday Night Live sucky skit type of a way. COVID dinner discussion is the name of the skit. They got rolled, right? They, you know, they realized they failed and they have all these apocalyptic things happening here. And so um, then, you know, they do a real rationalization and say, oh, yeah, we needed all that stuff because, you know, they had to. And then they end it with this. When an anti-vaxxer gets it, I feel happy. No, <laughs> And in two days, a group protested in New York City yesterday, the mask mandates being lifted in some of the schools. <laughs> you heard that correct. They're protesting because the students don't have to wear masks anymore. Mask for loved ones, mask for friends. It's not about you. Also not hard to do. Just being careful and wash your hands. Mask for loved ones, mask for friends. It's not about you. So this is the reality that that SNL skit was portraying the schools. <laughs> you heard that correct. They're protesting because the students don't have to wear masks anymore. Mask for loved ones. Mask for friends. It's not about you. you. It's not about you. Do. Just because we're tired doesn't mean it's over. Mandate masks. That's our ass. I mean, what? It's not about you. It's also not hard to do. Just because we're tired doesn't mean it's over. Mandate masks mandate masks it's catchy don't you think these are the very karens that were being portrayed in that snl skit and they're trying their hardest to avoid uh what's the five stages of uh, denial anger negotiation uh, denial negotiation anger depression acceptance 
They're going to go through those five processes until they come to acceptance. This is negotiation. They haven't gotten angry yet. And then after they get angry, they'll get depressed. And then they'll reach the acceptance and release the emotional charge. But this whole time, they've been in denial. So they're going to have to go through a process of acknowledging everything that we've been blown away by for two years. Every day seems to be even crazier than the last. They're trying to process that all at once. Now that they're realizing their Romeo that swooned them and swept them off their feet suddenly left when the next morning. See what I'm saying? They're really going to go through a process now, and it's going to have some ripple and knock-on effects, and you're going to have to acknowledge that they're going through some trauma. Like I saw a guy standing in Provo, wearing his mask, only one, and you could see the anger in his eyes, even behind the mask. You couldn't see any other facial expressions, but you could see how angry he was behind it, just in the eyes. So he he was no longer in the... He's still in the negotiation phase too by standing out there in the middle of the public, the only fucking one wearing a mask. He was in denial the whole time. And now his protest by standing out there by himself being the only one. Or there's a guy at work that wears one while he's driving his machine, a loader. That's their protest to try and keep it going and say, oh no, oh no, we're going to keep it going. I thought we were going to go all the way, all the way. And you guys are just going to walk away like... What? What? I thought we had a thing going here. And these people, you got to feel for them, man. Because they're going to break down and cry. And rather than cry, they would rather do this. To avoid the more uncomfortable feelings of accepting the truth. They're demanding that we re-engage in them with their reality bubble. And suddenly everyone left. And now they're just standing there by themselves. No, 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 everyone come back. We're doing this whole thing, right? We were building our whole world around this, right? I built my whole world around this. I fucking put it in inside of me. I'm stuck with this now that you guys are done with this. That's no fair. They're demanding it not come to an end. In order that they can avoid and prolong coming to the acknowledgement and recognition of what actually happened here. And so right now you're seeing the death throes of their whole worldview. It's like life and death to them and they will fight tooth and nail because otherwise they have an identity crisis where you reassess everything you think you know about your self-image and your worldview and your worldview and your self-image are like symmetrical. Any change in your self-image requires a change to accommodate that in your worldview And likewise, a change in your worldview requires a change in your self-image to fit within that new world view. Your worldview fits perfectly around your self-image and your self-image fits perfectly inside of your worldview. And when either one of them changes, the other one has to change shape to accommodate the new change of the other one's shape. And these people, to avoid acknowledging... And accepting a new worldview that you got played and had, and it was a little more than meets the eye going on here for the last two years, and people have been trying to tell you that, and you ignored them, and mocked them, and ridiculed them, and it turns out they were right. That's the world you live in that you're denying is real. That's the world view that will require a change in your self-image. You're no longer the free, loving person you thought you were. You're a slave. You're a sheep. You're on a farm. You're being cultivated And if you're not careful, you'll be culled. And it's for the benefit of the entire herd. We're only as fast as the slowest individual within the herd. And for the benefit of everyone, because you're so into everyone else, it's not about you. Right? The benefit of the many outweigh the benefit of the few. Well, we're just getting rid of a few of the slowest, dumbest to benefit the whole herd. You're all into that, right? It's not about the individual. It's about... Right? I'll I'll quit there, but these people, you're going to have to really, really try and put yourself in their shoes. Really try and imagine what it would be like if you were one of them that are having to go through this process of going, wait a minute, what, huh? And at the same time, phase two, and the boomers aren't immune either because the boomers are the ones that are most attracted to all this patriotic red, white, and blue 4th of July shit. They're like, what? War? Yeah, I'm down with the war. Same people that called you racist because you supported Trump 
burned down the cities, ran you through a scam for the last two years, are now saying, now go over here and de defend these good Ukrainians. And they're like, yeah, yeah, America. The same people. So there's going to be identity crisis. And when we all collectively have an identity crisis of our own individual self-image and worldview, there is a paradigm shift. Our collective self-images and worldviews, where they overlap, is our paradigm. And the tie that binds any society or any family or any church or any community is your common beliefs that overlap in your self-image and worldview with your neighbor's self-image and worldview. That's called your collective paradigm. And we got to break them down to build them back up. Like Imagine Dragons say in two of their songs, Believer, you break me down, you build me up, believer, and whatever it takes. Break me down, build me back up, do whatever it takes. Their self-image and worldviews have to be broken down so we can all collectively have a paradigm shift. Otherwise, they're going to dig their heels in like you see right there and say, no, my world is real and you need to come join me in the pandemic and the Fauci and the science and the, what, what happened? I thought we had a whole world we were going to build around this and I was right here as the good, valiant person on the high moral high ground, so virtuous and pure and just going to exterminate all those fucking dirty, scummy, f see what I'm saying? These people got to let go of who they thought they were and the world they thought they lived in and adapt to reality as it is now revealing itself to them. Resistance and refusal to do so will cost them dearly, and the longer they resist, accepting the truth of the reality in the world they live in, letting go of their preconceived ideas, all that shit they thought they knew, the harder it's going to be on them. So how many times do we need them to use the same video game over and over again and in a conflict before we accept and acknowledge, oh, wait, yeah, I thought I was fighting for freedom and truth and justice and liberty. Turns out I was getting played like a puppet. And the longer it takes for you to let that go and acknowledge the truth of the reality that's being revealed around you, the harder it's going to be on you and others. Because there are some others in these other countries that haven't figured it out either. And they're going to round them up and say, hey, anyone that ain't figured it out yet, come on down. We got some patriotic, uh, you know, freedom-loving, flag-waving, God-fearing, gun-toting stuff for y'all to do. Yeehaw! Them boomers ain't immune to this either. They're getting reeled in right now. These are the libtards. It is a cultural consciousness farm. And you got to get rid of all the cells or just a few cells in the Petri dish contaminate the rest of the culture within the Petri dish. So that's what's happening. Reseeding the Petri dish. Purification. Refinement. Like a distillery. What does it take in a distillery? Heat and pressure and time. I was saying earlier today that the plasma fires could be used to show people how in the dark they've been kept for four years, but truthfully, no amount of censorship could have kept that from them. It would be they themselves who kept their own minds under wraps, because as I've proven, millions, hundreds of millions, if not billions of people pass the same trees that I've shown you. So it is they that keep their own minds under wraps, and regarding this distillation process the two links in the description and songs to accompany this video like a fine wine and cheese are Ed Sheeran Make It Rain and Ed Sheeran I See Fire lyrics from Make It Rain here I know there can come fire from the sky to refine the purest of kings and even though I know this fire brings me pain even so and just the same make it rain Oh, the seed needs the water before it grows out of the ground, but it just keeps on getting harder, the hunger more profound. Well, I know there can come tears from the eye, but they may as well be in vain. And even though I know these tears come with pain, even so and just the same, make it rain. Well, the seas are full of water that stops by the shore, just like the riches of grandeur never reach the poor. Let the clouds fill with thunderous applause and let lightning be the veins and fill the sky with all that they can draw when it's time to make a change. This may be referring to something like the Samvartika fires that are said to destroy all which pl displeases Indra. Like a consciousness, a living, intelligent, 
electricity consciousness. Here's a lyric from the song I See Fire by Ed Sheeran. Inside the mountain? Burning the trees and hollowing souls. Video links will be in the description.